Alrighty, we are on to the third installment in my Harry Potter house recommendations. These are book recommendations based on your Hogwarts house. Now we're doing Ravenclaw. We're doing this in the order of my favorite houses. I guess let's start when I was thinking about Ravenclaw books. One thing I thought would be fun was to talk about books that have a lot of wordplay in them because I think Ravenclaws will really enjoy books that use words in playful ways with puns and stuff like that. So I thought of The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster because this book is a middle grade fantasy novel, I guess, but every chapter is essentially a new experiment with words. It's really just a jaunt through the English language and it plays so much with wordplay and language and different twists you can make on words and I think that that's so fun and it's so cleverly written. I think it's just such a Ravenclaw thing. It's taking words and turning them into a world in and of themselves and it's so fun to read every chapter of this book and get all the jokes and references. It's not overly complicated because it is a kid's book, but I think it's still really smart and that Ravenclaws will appreciate how witty this book is. Another book that I have on this list because I think that it has such a fun time with the English language is actually a play. It's a play that I have loved for many, many years. I read this when I was in high school. I got to do scene work of it when I was taking acting classes in high school. And when I was in college, I was actually an understudy in a production of this play. So I've memorized pretty much the entire script of it, which is an incredible feat because this play is so wordy and just bizarre. It is On the Verge by Eric Overmeyer. This is essentially about three women who are scientists and they want to explore the world. They are kind of like archaeologists, kind of anthropologists, they're everything. They are explorers and in their exploration they actually start time traveling and experiencing all of these different eras and places and they approach everything in such a scientific way they're taking notes they are making theories and they are analyzing the world around them and i think it's so so fun the characters in this book truly are so dedicated to knowledge and truth and learning, which is obviously a very Ravenclaw thing. I love how this book covers so much of history, it covers so many different things, but it's not too serious either. It's super funny and bizarre and quirky. The language and the jokes are... <laughs> It's very nerdy and weird. It's just a very, very verbose and unusually written text, but it's one of my favorite plays that I've ever read. It's just something about it I think is so charming and hilarious and wonderful. It's so goofy and strange and I have such a soft spot for it in my heart. I think that it is genius and such an underrated piece of theater. The next book on my Ravenclaw list is a graphic novel. It is Photo Booth by Meg Fitzgerald. It's one of my favorite graphic novels I've ever read and I think this is a very Ravenclaw book for two reasons. Half of this book is kind of a history lesson and half of this book is more of a memoir and I think that both halves of this book are very Ravenclaw because first of all we're getting a very detailed history of the photo booth it's very well researched and you are learning so much about the mechanics of the photo booth and how it came to be and different bits of trivia and facts about the photo booth's history. That half of the book is very academic, which is a very Ravenclaw thing. The memoir side of this book I also feel like is actually extremely Ravenclaw as well because it's about Meg Fitzgerald's experience being so intensely nerdy about something. She talks about how obsessive she becomes with photo booths and she finds this community of photo booth lovers and I think that it's a very Ravenclaw thing to have kind of weird nerdy obsessions to really throw yourself into a community of people that love something as intensely as you do and that fandom experience is something that to me strikes me as very Ravenclaw and I think that Ravenclaws will be able to understand why Meg Fitzgerald has this intense passion for photo booths. Even if you don't specifically relate to liking photo booths, I think that you will relate 
to having an interest and throwing yourself into the history of it and throwing yourself into learning everything you possibly can about this particular thing. I think this book is so amazingly well done. I love the art style. I love her writing style. She made me interested in something that I never thought I would be interested in because she loves it so much and I just really really enjoyed that. I thought it was so great. The next book on my list is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is a very interesting book. It follows this girl who lives with some members of her family, uh, and you find out that some other members of her family have died under mysterious circumstances. The book itself just has this very creepy, ominous vibe to it. I don't really want to say much more than that but you should definitely read this book. The reason that I chose this as a Ravenclaw book was a few different things. First of all, I feel like the main character of this book is very much inside her own head. She creates a world for herself and she's very mentally self-absorbed. I don't mean this in a narcissistic way, I just mean that she is very withdrawn. Her world is kind of limited but she makes it expansive within her own mind. I feel like that's a very Ravenclaw character trait and I think it's something that other Ravenclaws will relate to and understand. I also really like that this book is so ambiguous. It has all these questions about what is really going on because I feel like the narrator is actually a bit of an unreliable narrator. So this book is pretty simple and easy to read, but there is so much that you can get out of it if you really dive into it and you really analyze it. I think that the possibilities for the way that you can interpret this book and think about it, to me, I think is something that a Ravenclaw audience will really appreciate and really be able to get a lot out of. I liked this book when I finished it, but it wasn't until months later that I really found that I loved this book because when you take it at face value it's not necessarily going to be the most amazing mind-blowing thing but it's a book that really got under my skin and there were certain details about it that I couldn't get out of my head and I started to interpret in new ways and I kept thinking about it and I was like you know what I'm pretty sure this book is about something entirely different than I thought it was originally about. I think that that experience is so cool. It's a book that I want to reread. I just definitely have a very profound appreciation for this book that I've developed as it has just sat in my brain over time. And then the last book on this list is another middle grade. It's another book that involves time travel, actually. It is When You Reach Me by Rebecca Stead. I chose this book as a Ravenclaw read for a few reasons. The first being that the main character in this book is obsessed with the book A Wrinkle in Time. She carries this book around with her both literally and figuratively, and it is so important to her. I really think that if you are Ravenclaw, you will connect to this main character in the way that she has found solace in literature, in the way that she loves this book so deeply and intensely. I also really, really like the way that children are written in this book. Rebecca Stead wrote them in a very believable way. They're not too precocious or too intelligent for kids. I thought that the characters were very genuinely children. They're still learning, they're young, they are naive in many ways, but I think that the way that she writes the kids was so refreshing because their minds were so open to learning and open to new possibilities. And I think that the characters in this book learn a lot and they grow a lot. Their mentality is so forward thinking and it has such a Ravenclaw feel to me in the sense that these kids really want to learn new things and experience new things. They believe in possibilities and theoretical situations that haven't been proved but they have such a desire to go out and experiment and basically pioneer new scientific discoveries. I liked the idea of a future with the characters in this book. I think that Ravenclaws will appreciate this book a lot. Those were my recommendations for a Ravenclaw reader. I hope you enjoy these books as much as I did, and I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.